Greetings survivors, Fayot here and in this guide I'm going to show you how you can build Cheryl to be the strongest support and healing character she can be. Cheryl is invaluable in any team composition, she's not the only viable support, every character has their own strengths and quirks that you can utilize, but Cheryl is straight up the most consistent healer you can have if you can share resources effectively and manage your cooldowns so i gave her a spin here i'm playing on my friend boom's account because he maxed her out she's level 25 and i created a build that focuses support and healing to help the team survive and clear objectives quickly so let's start with what she's doing right off the bat healing touch activate the ability to create a healing zone for you and your teammates this is on a cooldown and it really is not the best way to heal during combat this is for team sustain whilst tracking you can save your life by standing in this zone but it's better utilized when you want to keep your health and your team's health high in between objectives and while traversing the map i'm going to explain why in a sec cola coaster carry more sims cola and start the match with an extra one in your inventory very very useful Contact Courage. Drinking a Sam Scholar partially reduces your fear and the fear of your nearby teammates. This is big. Contact Healing. When you drink a Sam Scholar nearby teammates will also gain health. This is huge. Okay. So, we're going to strengthen these effects and make Cheryl a powerhouse of healing and support. Sam's Plus. Sam Scholar restores more health. That's plus 30% at the final tier. We put four points in this. Okay. Then we go for first aid. When you revive a teammate from bleeding out, they recover the percentage of health. This is not important because we're not going to invest too heavily on this. But we needed to be able to follow the tree to the right. So here we have Deep Pocket Sam Scholar. Increase the maximum amount of Sam Scholar you can carry. Two additional colas when you are 2 out of 2 here. Packing Pop, start the match with an extra Sam's Cola, up to 2 pieces. And Industrial Strength up to 25% more HP. Not only can she heal and support, but she can also be quite beefy and tanky. So this is very very important. This is our priority down here. This should not be missed in any build involving Cheryl. After this... We go here, long life batteries, increase the battery life of your flashlight, that's not important. Fear no evil, reduce the amount of fear received from any source, this is not important either, but this and this are very important. Arcane Knowledge has three levels and allows you to get a 50% larger detection radius. You are not the best at doing this, but you are freeing up your leader's points that they can put into combat abilities that Cheryl simply doesn't possess so by having this you are a scout and a support unit so your other team members can invest in perks and abilities that will help you survive the actual encounters that 50 percent is pretty huge you'll be seeing exclamation marks from a mile away very very useful Fast forward, reduce the duration time for objective events. This is very, very good on Cheryl because, as I said, she does not gain the combat prowess that other builds do unless you build her for damage. And I don't realize why you should ever do that. If you play hybrid healer and slugger, maybe. But this is healing and utility and support. So with fast forward, we get 10% reduction on our timer. Okay, that means that events like grabbing the tiger or grabbing the map will be completed faster. And we want that because these are some of the most dangerous encounters in PvP. During those encounters, the demon regenerates energy very, very fast and can really easily overwhelm you if you're not careful. At this point, I think the demon requires a buff when it comes to what they can do when it comes to the power of minions and the boss unit. But that's a totally different discussion. I digress. Then we go for one out of two artful dodger. Reduces stamina cost of dodging. But what we really want to do here is seeing stars. Three levels in seeing stars. This is good for two reasons. First, 
Even if you can't kill them, you can break their balance. And breaking their balance will leave enemies vulnerable to attacks from other allies or even a finisher from an ally who can take them down with much more high damage output. Second good thing about Sing Stars is that we don't really have that many good alternatives. Okay, additionally, if you want to take this out, you can go for amulets. You can carry amulets that you can give to your allies up to two, and then you can increase the percentage of your damage reduction whilst having a shield or even increase the length of your shield bar. For this build though, I'm gonna go with this. I think that every character should be able to contribute something when it comes to actually putting down the enemies. And because you're invulnerable whilst in your execution or finisher animation, Serial will be kept safe and the enemy that's being busted in the head with a big hammer is out of commission or will be killed. So... In order to support the team as much as possible, I really suggest you give this configuration a spin. As I said, if this is not to your liking, go down here, grab two of the amulets, so you can either keep them or drop them to your teammates, and then invest to some reinforced amulet power, or even go here and put points into Fear No Evil to max it out and have Serial be less prone to getting terrified whilst you're tracking the environment. This is my Serial healing and support build, guys. And before anyone starts complaining about the lack of gameplay snippets at the beginning, I gotta tell you, this game will look the same whether you are showing gameplay that is level 1 or showing gameplay that is level 25. The numbers will be different, popping above enemies' heads, and sometimes you might see something extreme, like attacking an elite and then finishing him right away with a buffed character, but all in all, those snippets are pure iron candy, and I try to keep this vid short and to the point. I make it adamantly clear in every vid that I cover, in every game that I cover, that I don't want to stretch them out to fill them with flashy lights and flashy montages. This is a guide. I have to be on point. I have to be as clean about the content as possible. When you come back for the montages or streams, you're going to see some eye candy, I promise you. Talking about streams, hit the notification bell if you want to catch us whilst we're playing online. Sub like and share for more content like this, and if you really want to help me, consider getting a membership on the channel or visit my Patreon, it really helps a hell of a lot. Thank you so much for watching, more guides on the way, check out my Ash from Army of Darkness build, and until next time be well, stay frosty and always try for perfection. GRs.